right, hello everyone, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 8 of Star Trek Fenrir. This is the Season 2 finale. Uh, for those unfamiliar, Fenrir is a tabletop role-playing game that is using the Star Trek Adventures rule set. We are set in 2411 aboard a Cerberus class. And if you want to catch the VODs, you can catch them on my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. There's a jet flying overhead. I stopped talking because we have new microphone technology going on, so you may or may not be able to hear me right now. If you can, great, drop a comment, and I'll know that this is working. Anyways, uh, two announcements this week. Uh, the first is that my newest Star Trek Adventures game, Star Trek Gangut, uh, will hopefully begin airing May 29th at 2 p.m. Eastern Daily Time, or GMT minus four. And I would love it if you all spread the word and turned out to support the new crew. Uh, the second announcement is that I am still working on a comprehensive Andromeda Galaxy supplement. Uh, if you are a patron of mine, you can suggest cameo appearances of planets, alien species, and a whole lot more. So, hey, throw me a buck and you get to suggest something. I think that's a good deal. Uh, speaking of uh, throwing me a buck, I greatly appreciate whatever support you provide to the stream, no matter what form it comes in. And uh, I'm just going to stop there because otherwise I'm going to get anonymously bit-bombed again. Uh, so let's just go around and have everyone introduce themselves, starting with uh, Mr. Rast. Hello, everybody. Um, my, name is, uh, my name is John. I play Rast, who is the first officer. Uh, he is half Betazoid, half Romulan. And um, he will be doing the log today. All right. Up next is Mr. Zero. Um, my name is James. I play, I now play uh, Lieutenant Zero, swing type android. Um, I'm probably going to do something engineering today. Archuleta? I play Commodore Brie Archuleta, um, and she is a human woman in her late 30s. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Doc Watney. And then Dag? You're muted. Just a test. Mm. I'm Dag. I'm from Northern California. I play Fenrir's holographic Vulcan science officer, Vassar, as well as the somewhat eccentric Gorn transporter chief, Zeke. You can find me on Twitter at TrekNexus. And then Mr. Williams. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm Aaron from Prince Edward Island, Canada. I play Commander RJ Williams, Fenrir's human chief of security. Um, I also play the hypochondriac jensen who i believe is the, in line to be a lieutenant now mm -hmm. and the then horror. uh oh sorry go ahead said the horror the horror also i see what you did there mr bit bomber you split it up this time i see what you're doing uh sorry but last but not least uh matthew i'm matthew i'm from uh, montreal canada and i play lieutenant commander lee tobin another science officer on board the fenrir who is Racked with guilt and intensely religious. Very good. And with that, let's go ahead and run the intro.
Fish. And welcome back. So something I like doing for all my Star Trek games is I like having the players do an opening log. And as John has said, Commander Rast has that tonight. So Rast, go ahead and take it away for us. First officer's log, Stardate 8899.8. With the introduction of the Sean Invasion Force recently, our crew has presented several viable options in dealing with the Sean, but I have to admit that I was a little disheartened at first that the crew was so very willing to kill 150 million souls. I'm hoping to push at least an attempt at a diplomatic solution to the captain and adherence to Starfleet Directive 010. If diplomacy fails, I believe the next option would be the, would be the close pass through the corona of a nearby sun, which we hope will eject the Sean without killing their hosts. I'm also a little apprehensive with the fact that the captain has so recently suffered such a violation from the Sean recently, and I will have to closely monitor her well-being during this foray. And that is it. All righty. So, as stated, we are going to cut to the ready room where Commodore Archuleta and Commander Rast are having a very frank discussion about where to go from here. So the very first thing is he's concentrating on her feelings. Mm. So if he were doing that, um, he would get the sense that there's an undercurrent of rage. It seems she's gotten used to it. Which she'll be, be looking out the window. <laughs> she'll she'll be looking be out the window. <laughs> She's staring out the window with her hands behind her back in a Sith Lord pose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, hello, Commander. Captain, Commodore, ma'am. You know, it would be so easy to just destroy them. I know, but it is in our way. What is our way? Diplomacy. And he moves over and takes a seat. And then, worst case scenario, get rid of the Sean without getting rid of the hosts. Well, we tried diplomacy with the Okita. Look where that got us. We tried diplomacy with the Latinum's Lord. Look where that got us. Why would we try that again? The more you attempt a task, the better you get at it. Oh, so you're saying third time's a charm. Oh, I don't necessarily expect diplomacy to work with the Sean, but I do feel that it is our obligation to at least try. That's fair. Though, as you are the captain, I will follow your lead. Well, I expect you to do that. Do you have any reports on these planet-sized vessels? Anything new? <sighs> Nothing new at this point. Um, we do have quite a few uh, interesting ideas and plans on uh, how we are going to deal with these troop carriers, as we seem to be uh, calling them. Um, and uh, if diplomacy doesn't work, I believe that the next best option would be to find a way to eject the Sean without destroying 150 million souls. I can tell you that when I was one of them, I wanted nothing more than to, for someone to relieve me of the state I was in. And I couldn't, I couldn't ask for it. Neither can they. And we followed the correct procedure with you as well. 
in yes. the sense that you are here to uh, continue. I'm an outlier. You don't have to be an outlier. If we can find a way, you're right. But I do, I do believe last, uh, you know, last uh, ditch effort will be to destroy the vessel as we can't have it reaching any of its destinations. But I do believe it is incumbent upon us to do our best to find another solution. Well, they don't exactly have engines or weapons. Exactly. So not not that we've seen. Yes, and you should always be prepared to be surprised by the Sean. I find it well, never mind. I'll speak your mind. I am <sighs> I'm concerned about your anger. And how it will color your path. I think I can handle myself. I agree. Your concern is noted. On a side note, I did send you a, a nice little uh, update uh, on a report on some outgoing requests from Matic for promotions for staff. Ah, yes. Uh, one for Jensen. What are your thoughts on promoting Mr. Jensen? <laughs> um. I believe he, is, he has been proving himself to be a very capable, conscientious, and um, you know, just overall Starfleet-y type officer. Right. I agree. Once we've handled this Sean business, you can, you can have the honors. <laughs> Unless you want to delegate that to Lieutenant Commander Lee. <laughs> oh, I'll take I'll take care of it. It is uh, it is nice every now and then to be able to uh, to give them good news, since I normally give them the bad news as well. Mm -hmm. Well, and that comes to my next point. I'm afraid Zeke is going to stay where he's at. Okay. Not that he isn't doing an excellent job, but I just don't think he's ready. He is a little unconventional. <laughs> to say the least. Well, the nicest thing about what we're dealing with right now is that there are no... Uh, no pressing matter in the sense that they are moving rather slowly. And uh, thankfully, we do not uh, see any Ferengi on any long range scans at this point. Are you, is there a reason we should be worried about the Ferengi? Uh, lately, our encounters with them have just not gone well. Nah, uh, yeah, well. I like to keep, keep them at arm's length anyway. Um, who all did we contact at this point as far as potential assistance should things go the way of having to tow them through the sun? Well, uh, the Clement is, and GM, you can correct me here. They're mm -hmm. out, right? Yeah, the Clement okay. is out for probably another week and a half. Okay. So... Um, I've called the Leif Erickson and the Okita to our side, but from what I am to understand, we'll need to uh, 
go into multi-vector assault mode in order to tow a single one of these with their help. So I would say let's prepare to do that and we can deal with the divergent. And what do you feel one. about? <laughs> I don't know what to call them. <laughs> and how do you feel about contacting those civilizations that are potentially on the receiving end of the Sean troop carriers? Uh, I would, you mean for assistance? Yes. Um, Not even so much assistance, more of a, a joint operation in the sense that they have as much to lose as we do. Remind me again where these are headed. Yeah, let me uh, put you- New Romulus. Uh, okay. Um, and uh, Bejor. And then the third one was to Earth. Yes. Right. Okay. Which so I we, don't bother the mentioning. The third one is the one that's like going to be super difficult. Is that correct? Okay. That is correct. Um, so, yeah, I think we should notify them. I mean, you're half Romulan. So that negotiation, if problems arise, we can cross that bridge. And I don't have any concerns about Bajor. So make uh, that with, so. With Bajor... Um, the trajectory of the uh, sphere will take it dangerously close to Cardassia, and there is the potential of another the enemy of my enemy scenario. Right. Um, notify them discreetly. Yes, ma'am. Is there anything else, Commander? I want you to know that I have your back. And if there is any concerns or questions that you have, I want you to know that I, that I will, that I will be here for you, Brianne. I mean, captain. You being Commodore. Commodore. Thank you, Rast. Uh, he stands up, does the, does the, little uh straighten his shirt and uh exits stage right all righty so uh before we let ras do some phone calling we are going to cut to one of the science labs and in the science lab are lieutenant commander vassar lieutenant commander lee tobin and commander williams now, you all are basically playing the game of, well, if we did this, what what would that mean? If we did this, what would this mean? Um, but your leading sort of theory at the moment is the process by which you use the star to expel the Sean. So let's take it from there and see where, where we go. That would be Vassar, Williams, and Tobin, by the way. <laughs> well, no, that's them all changing their backgrounds for those who can't actually see the overlay. Oh. They, they all literally changed their backgrounds. So it was like, Science okay. Lab. <laughs> <clears throat> well, uh, I will walk over to Vassar. Uh, so, Commander, I think we can both agree that the use of the graviton beam weapon is an absolute last resort. I would concur with that assessment, Lieutenant Commander. Hmm. Do you think it would be possible to, I don't know, examine the flotsam and jetsam that was released by the White Hole in order to ascertain the, the universe from which these spheres originated? Perhaps that might actually give us some inclination as to how we could send them back without engaging them directly. I believe that is sound though I am unsure what effect it may have as we must face the three of these spheres anyway. Hmm. The origin of their universe may provide some differential physics with which we could exploit in attempting to neutralize the invaders. Indeed, uh, some kind of quantum resonance scan might give us a, a better indication of the nature of the universe of origin. And as you said, 
any knowledge that we have could be advantageous. We never know what small details could actually prove to be critical. I will realign the internal sensors to accommodate the debris in the warp field. Thank you. Uh, Commander Williams, anything on tactical end? 37 separate tactical simulations, best result. 18% damage to the outer structure. Not enough to affect any sort of reasonable change. We could expend every torpedo that we have, quantum and photon, and exhaust the primary, secondary, and tertiary phaser coils. And it'll barely make a dent. Then it would seem that any solution that we're to devise comes from our area of expertise then. I would think so. I've also run several tactical simulations on the viability of beaming uh, torpedoes set to level one pulses inside the sphere based on telemetry we have and readings from the inside of the structure. We're looking at a best case scenario of 56% of the inhabitants affected, also insufficient. Do we suspect that the Shan possessing the individuals will retreat to their own domain upon the imminent threat of danger to the sphere itself? Seems to be how they've behaved in the past. If you consider the infected individuals aboard Fenrir, um, the danger all told was minimal even to the Shan, uh, but rather than face that danger, they chose to flee. I think it's conceivable to assume that they'll do that again. Then to use a crude metaphor, damaging any of the hosts would not likely deter the Sean from attempting such a maneuver again, as they could just return in new hosts. Correct. So we need to find a way to expel all of them, preferably simultaneously or as close to simultaneously as we can get. Is there a way that we might be able to devise probes that could emulate the beacon effect of the torpedoes so that we may, can cover more percentage of the population of each sphere? We should perhaps speak to the two, did they stay on board? Martinez and again, I never can remember his name. Obi. They Obi. Could... Obinetch. Obinetch, that's right. Uh, yes, they are both aboard. We could contact them to see if there are any other wavelengths of light to which the Sean are more sensitive. Could be worth looking into. I doubt it would be that difficult to make the necessary modifications to the probe that uh, uh, Lieutenant Commander Vassar has suggested. Real quick, though, because I think you guys could use a hint slash momentum. Let's deal with the debris. Uh, so Lee or Vassar, whichever one of you wants to take the lead, uh, this is going to be a reason science assisted by the ship's sensor science difficulty zero. I'll take the lead on this one. Okay. Should I assist with that or? Yeah, you can assist. Okay. Science. Williams, why don't, uh, Williams or zero, why don't one of you get the ship? And with uh, the debris, since we are using quantum resonance, would quantum mechanics suffice as a focus? Most definitely it would. All right. Well, that's already two momentum. Does the ship's sensor science get you anything more? Let's see. Okay. Unfortunately not. But hey, two momentum to start with. So it's interesting that you know how when you went to the Leviathan... And you got its quantum signature. Well, interestingly enough, the flotsam, the Camaro, the wet floor sign, the other knickknacks that came through the particle fountain, same universe as Leviathan. Most interesting. The quantum resonance scan has returned and it has found a match for the quantum signatures of the debris in the warp field. It matches Leviathan precisely. Yes. 
are you suggesting then, Vassar, that these Sean might in fact be refugees from this alternate universe that was overtaken by the same species that annihilated the Federation of that world? I find it unlikely that the Shan themselves are refugees, but their hosts may be, given that the ships are on collision courses with three major planets. It's not by chance for refugees. But that is an excellent postulate. Then even if we could send these people back, it would be a death sentence. I mean, I don't think there's anything to go back to. Precisely my point, Commander. We may need to rely on more diplomatic measures before we resort to our fail-safes. In any case, I think these people, or these beings, whether they be people or not, have suffered enough. And I think if there's any way that we can help them, we have an obligation to do so. I think if we call our two Sean friends to come to the science lab, we can determine if there are better wavelengths of life with which to purge Sean from their hosts in an attempt to rescue the individuals on board these vessels who may be just as much victims as any other Sean host we've encountered yet. Once we have determined a wavelength that can be more effective, we may wish to consider self-replicating probes. We can beam one in and it can replicate on its own to produce the wavelength that we need to purge the Sean. If that is successful, um, then we can attempt to rescue those hosts or at least reduce the ship's velocity such that it can be in a stable or rogue orbit. Failing those, more desperate measures may be taken. If we, can, pardon me, ahead. Commander. I was going to ask if you concurred, but it seems you have an idea. No, I, I actually agree. But uh, we do have to take into account the fact that there might be defensive emplacements within the spheres themselves that we haven't been able to detect. I'm certain that Commander Williams or uh, Mr. Zero from engineering would be able to not necessarily cloak the probes, but render them more difficult to be targeted or detected in order to supplement your plan? That is a good idea. I will report my findings to engineering. Commander Williams, would you like to meet with Lieutenant Zero to go over the fine points of this idea? Yes, I think there's merit to that. Thank you. I will call our two Sean individuals aboard to the mm -hmm. science lab. All right. So as uh, Martinez and Obrovich are uh, moving to the science lab, we're actually going to cut to main engineering. And our stars for this little scene are going to be Mr. Zero and Miss Allel. Now, Allel, you have been called to engineering for... It's not an emergency per se, but they definitely want someone from medical to be there. Um, Zero, you have an injured crewman, and I'm going to let you flavor what their injury is. So, <clears throat> knowing that the tractor beam is being worked on, um, we've been upgrading and we've also been laying additional cabling uh, to provide additional backups. Um, and additional conduits for uh, power systems, just in case, you know, if this one blows, we don't have to, we don't lose the entire tractor beam. It can immediately fall back to a subset. Um, what I would say is that somebody probably didn't connect it right, or they hit a live wire, and so they're probably injured with some sort of uh, electricity and burn wound. And yeah, well, that's what you see when you walk oh. into main engineering is you see a rather badly burned individual uh, cradling their arm, which uh, third degree burns are pretty prevalent. It probably really hurts. And she wasn't here when it happened. No, you she have been called, called to be here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
she'll approach the crewman and be like, how did this happen? And pull out her um, medical tricorder to scan. And I'd like you to roll me a, let's call this a reason medicine, a uh, difficulty of one. Emergency medicine? Most definitely. And would you look at that? Uh, that is actually no successes. <laughs> so uh, <Okay. laughs> I'm going to do this because it'll come into play later. I'll take threat and let you succeed at cost. <laughs> Thank you for it. <laughs> so yeah, Alel, you you start to scan, and then you you slap your tricorder a few times, and mm -hmm. you know scan again, and then slap it a few more times. And this time, when mm -hmm. you scan, it works. Yeah. Uh, what you realize is that sure enough, yeah, standard third degree burn came from an exploding EPS conduit that wasn't aligned properly. Easily treated with a dermal regenerator and some painkillers. Okay. Gosh dang it, this thing! I must not have charged it. Yeah. Um. Here, I have a hypo spray here in my mid pack. And uh, of course, the crewman does feel, you know, like he he stops like that wincing sort of posture and mm -hmm. relaxes a little bit. And then he says, hold on, you said your tricorder was out of power? I, I guess I thought I put it on the the charging dock. Um, you want to take a look at it? Uh, the crewman just sort of shakes his head, but then looks to Lieutenant Zero and says, Sir, I wasn't going to report this because I didn't think it had any merit, but we've been getting odd reports that small power devices across the ship are malfunctioning. Uh, tricorders, phasers, anything with a power pack, really. Does it affect the main power or the power to the tractor beams? Uh, not that I'm aware of, sir, no. Then at this time, there is zero reasoning to pursue matters in this. Uh, best educated guess at this time would be electrical interference due to the additional conduits we've been having to uh, haphazardly place into their current positions. Uh, as you wish, sir. Um... Um, Luke, wait. Hold on, hold on. Lieutenant, um, I can't do my job if this doesn't work. I'm sure that main, the main medical facilities still work. Um, even still, did you not receive training for when you're Trans for whenever your tricorders didn't work in field operations. Well, <laughs> that's besides the point. I can clearly see that he's burned, but in order to tell uh, the best way to treat him, the most efficient way, which I sh I'm sure you can appreciate. Um, I, I need my devices just as much as you need a spanner. Zero will uh, turn to a console. Um, he'll tap on it. He'll tap on it for a second, uh, and then he'll produce uh, two data pads. He'll give one to Alel, and it's basically like the. Did you literally just give Gray's Anatomy to Alel? Uh, pretty much just basically burns here are the cure here's here's how you treat them that that da, 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 like burns cuts scrapes that like just going through he goes there additional backups and then he'll he'll show his own that he made for himself like so that way it is fair great thank you she pockets the pad not even looking at it any more than she has to to deduce exactly what he just did and then <laughs> she grabs the injured crewmate by <laughs> the shoulder <laughs> and is like you're coming with me to sick right now uh yes ma'am how long will my crewman be unavailable i don't know why don't you check a clock I'll call you when it's done. 
I love it. And as Alal is exfiltrating uh, main engineering, we are actually going to go to Theater of the Mind, where Commander Rast, you have been, quote unquote, on hold with the Cardassian government. And, you know, it's starting to get to that point where you're like, okay, are they going to just blow me off? Are they going to answer? When the screen flickers and appearing before you on the screen is uh, someone you know of, Mr. Rast, because of your, shall we say, history in Spycraft. And Mr. Garrick simply says, Ah, Mr. Rast, it is a pleasure to see you. I did love your work earlier. It is a pleasure to see you as well. Um, we do have a potential issue I wanted to make you aware of. Ah, a potential issue. Then you are sure that those Sean are not going to be hitting Cardassia. Well, you never know what may very well redirect at the last moment. Mm, this is a fair point. Well, let's just say I have thought ahead in this endeavor. Not only have I gotten you a new uniform, as I believe yours is uh, in dire need of tailoring, but I've also dispatched a series of fleets to aid Starfleet's own when you attempt whatever it is you are attempting. It is most generous. But uh, it does come with a cost, as do all good things. As I assumed it would. I simply have one request, a personal request. I want to know, how did you survive? Because by all rights, you were abandoned. You were left for dead, as all burned spies are. So how did you survive? And no, I don't want to hear the Commodore saved you. I want to know what really saved you. This definitely sounds like a, like a conversation that we can have as, as soon as I um, am, insu am insured that we need your assistance and that we uh, benefit from your assistance. Ah. The true negotiator. I will pencil that in for and he like looks off screen a little bit and he says, We'll talk in a week's time. Affirmative. And then uh Mr. Garrick just sort of waves a little bit and then the screen goes dark. Giving you a he, little bit of a reprieve. And he plugs in uh he plugs in a communication to the captain, letting her know that the uh Cardassians have sent um, some ships to help. Basically, the... text messages, sir. <laughs> right, right, right. Now, Ras, there is another person or another faction you are communicating with. Do you want to handle that now or let it be a surprise later? I will let it go later. All righty. So, uh, again, I apologize if any jet noise is coming through. We are again testing a new microphone solution, but... Uh, what we're going to do now is we are going to cut back to, let's say, the science lab. Where at this point, uh, I don't really have tokens for them, but at this point, uh, Martinez and Obrovich have arrived. And uh, they're sort of looking around like, um, you called for us, sir? Yeah, da, you, uh, you wish to know something about the Sean, yes? Yes. We understand that the Sean are susceptible to various wavelengths of light, and we were hoping that you two may be able to help us understand which wavelength of light might be most effective, as we have 150 million potential hosts who may need to be freed from Sean infestation. This is a very big problem you have. Let me think. Only a little. Have you tried the combining gamma radiation with perhaps theta radiation? We have not tried anything outside of the visible spectrum. Well, the reason I did not tell you this earlier, problem with gamma and theta radiation combined, I need metaphor, hold on. And he looks around the science lab, looking for anything he can use. Size goes over to a replicator, uh, takes a apple and a knife out of the replicator. And he says, okay, so let's assume Apple is host. Skin around Apple is Sean. Following me so far? Yes. Very good. Now, your graviton beam does this to Sean. 
and he just stabs the apple with the knife. Not good solution, kills apple, kills person. Not what we want to do. Takes the knife out. Gamma and theta radiation combined does this, and he begins very carefully peeling the surface, just very carefully just getting the just the edge of the skin. But you do see that some apple is still attached to it. And he says, still causes problems to host, but where this is going is yes, while you can potentially remove all skin from apple, you leave apple exposed to problem. And he literally takes the apple. Uh, he's basically cored it so that, you know, there's slices of it and parts of the skin are off. Um, but he shows you the vulnerable flesh of the apple and literally just sort of starts squeezing it until juice begins to run from his fist and says, this is representing any number of other radiation, disease, injury. Very easy to injure her host at that point. So you're saying they would become immunocompromised? Not only immunocompromised, but you will need to rebuild from scratch. Understood. Thank you very much. You may leave. And Vassar will take a piece of beamed over debris from mm -hmm. the uh, that we beamed in from the warp field and he will place it into a testing tank and close the testing tank and lock it and stop start bombarding it with uh, theta and gamma radiation in various mixtures to see if that quantum signature is more or less susceptible to the bombardment. All right. So as Obervich is uh, leaving, he kind of looks between Williams and Lee Tobin and goes, which of you would like apple juice? I'm, I'm good. Thanks. Likewise. Very good. Martinez, here you go. And he just sort of shoves it into Martinez's hand. And he goes, ah! <laughs> And those two leave. Uh, as Vassar is uh, doing his thing, though, we're going to cut back to main engineering, because I believe, Williams, you are going to go talk to Mr. Zero. Yeah. So let's go back to main engineering. Alel has left. Zero is still there. All right, so as you step into main engineering, uh, Mr. Williams, you notice that there is, to say fatigued officers would be an understatement. They probably have been pulling 26-7 shifts, you know, back to back to back, getting very minimal sleep at this point. Zero doesn't seem any worse for the wear. Not, yeah, zero's fine. No, he'll... Uh... Williams will approach him. Lieutenant? Commander? How's everything going? Besides one crew member failing to follow protocol and ending up in sick bay at Lieutenant Lell's uh, suggestion, um, everything seems to be working properly. Um, there have been reports of slight electrical interference with small devices. However, that does not, that's something that could be dealt with after the fact. I've come to you with a question. I may have an answer. Well, I'm hoping between the two of us, we can work something out. We're... Checking on the viability of releasing probes to the interior of the Sean sphere, uh, probes that will emit wavelengths of light harmful to the Shan to force them to relinquish control of their hosts and return to subspace. However, Commanders Lee and Vassar have raised an interesting question. There could be internal defenses that would attack our probes do this um, I'm not sure if the captain's even going to sign off on this but I figure we might as well have a whole plan to present rather than half of one you and I need to put our heads together to find some way to shield these probes from detection not necessarily a cloaking device but maybe some sort of subspace scattering field to throw off sensors or create dead zones or even fool uh, IFF software. Uh, 
the issue I see first would be unaware of how the internals are set up. Do we know if, you know, are these troops in stasis pods? Are they living amongst giant cities? You know, is if we were to detonate this light emitting torpedo, would it even reach or affect the people in question? Well, based on the internal configuration, if we just detonate torpedoes in the sort of center of the sphere, we're looking at just over 50% of inhabitants affected. What we're looking for is a more intelligent solution, probes that can actively seek out clusters of stragglers or beings taking shelter and expose them proactively. It's a simple enough task to outfit probes with biometric sensors to seek out life forms. It's even simpler still to program them to emit light on those wavelengths that affect the Shan, but where we need some engineering wizardry is, well, protecting them. The issue I could see happening would be fallout contamination or in the event of a malfunction of the drone or perhaps even if there is an internal turret or defense network that is programmed to judge based off of what is already there and then if anything new is added it could view that as a threat to be eliminated um something of interest would be to probably release a form of nanites that could provide even even if it provided just an eternal scan but if there was a way for us to get nanites to swarm and give a give a flash of this light that we are that we are attempting to produce it would be done in much smaller areas to where granted with them having this telepathic connection they would have to they would know quicker but it's a lot more subtle than just setting off a torpedo for all we know the sean could have a kill all host host kind of thing if something like that were to occur we have a fair point but I think maybe we should put the horse before the cart. These spheres don't even have engines. There's no way to communicate internally to them. I think they're lifeboats. But I mean, nanites, as soon as you get into talking about subatomic machines, uh, kind of above my pay grade. Maybe we should loop commanders Lee and uh, Vasarian on this and help Williams to tab his comm badge and say, yeah. Williams to Science Lab 1. Uh, this is Lieutenant Commander Lee. Go ahead, Commander. Uh, Commander Lee, Lieutenant Zero has an interesting suggestion for us on the uh, probe front. Uh, and he'll sort of explain everything that Zero suggests. Do you think it's possible? Well, Commander, my expertise in nanotechnology is fairly limited. I would have to defer to Lieutenant Zero on this matter. Um, I would say, however, that introducing a fundamentally unknown element into an already unstable situation 
might not be the best course of action. Nanites oftentimes have a tendency to go awry. Nanotechnology is still in, relatively in its infancy, largely because of the influence of the Borg. I see. He'll turn to the Lieutenant, are you confident that these things can be controlled safely? Could we perhaps use a probe as a delivery method? Define nanites? safely. Well, can you be reasonably certain that these things won't interlink form a hive mind and attempt to assimilate us? I have no intention on creating Borg 2.0 if that is the question at hand. Uh. The immediate issue that may arise is judging by the makeup of the nanites and the concentration that it may or may not take, especially on a organic being, there may be some side effects similar to 20th century lead poisoning, I guess would be the closest assumption would be the closest analogy I can make. Uh, I recently downloaded a pad for Lieutenant Allel that should include information on something like that that she could use in case her tricorder decides to mess up again. Tricorder mess up. Huh. Williams, maybe yeah. just reflexively you think, nah, there's no problem with power packs. Maddox gone from the ship. You check your tricorder, you check your phaser, dead. Who did this to my phaser? Who did what to your phaser? And Williams will slide the housing off and expose the completely inert power cell. Fully charged. When I took it from the armory when I started duty. Electrical interference. Mr. Zero, I'd like you to give me... him a book on hand to hand combat. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> just give him uh, the Krav Maga, Krav Maga for dummies. Just like, here you go. Um, Zero, I'd like you to roll me a insight engineering, please. Difficulty of one. Difficulty of one. Difficulty of one. Um, You would have a focus. Power systems. Yeah. <laughs> Spend your determination. <laughs> there you go. I think I think that should be a requirement that all engineers have to take power systems just because it's such a bullshit fucking focus. It is, yeah. Hey, three successes, another two momentum. So Zero, you remember how a certain admiral on a certain universe class starship installed a certain system into your vessel? Wow. Well, apparently the uh, energy venting system that he installed, it maybe is draining the ambient energy a little too quickly. Hence, power pack problems. Um, Zero will uh, pull up the, uh, the device and how it's working. Um, that... Uh, Beckett installed. Um, see, as I stated, electrical interference. This will need to be readjusted uh, at some point. However, at this time, um, he will stop and then he's going to start reading the gauges. This may cause an issue if upon activation of a hype of a power draining uh power draining systems such as the transporters uh fire weapons or even the tractor beam may cause additional power loss this may be an issue that needs to be resolved sooner than later well then i'm gonna get out of your hair um at your earliest convenience, can you forward a, your 
data regarding these nanites to Science Lab 1. Uh, I'd also suggest that you run this whole power venting issue past Commander Rast. I will inform him of the actions I am partaking in. Excellent. Well, I'll be on my way. Um, see you in 6F later. Poker night? Why not? I, I, I want to be able to tell all my friends that I robbed an android blind twice. I would like Don't... to tell all my friends that I allowed a human to win twice. Them's fighting words. 1830 hours. A holodeck now, or still 6 aft? No, still 6 aft. Let's get done for real. All right. Bring your latinum. Club three. <laughs> um, Zero will send a report to Rast uh, and then also CC the captain in for like the, oh, hey, this matrix that was installed by Beckett's kind of fucking with shit. Mm -hmm. So, Commodore, Commander, what do you do about the system? Because it's very easy to disable. You literally push that button there and the system gets disabled. But you may not have it available again if you turn it off, like, i.e., you can turn it off whenever you want, but getting it to work properly probably is going to take some time that you don't have. Are we there... talking on the bridge or something? Uh, I'll tell you what. Let's, or are we uh... just, just deciding? Yeah, I would say just decide uh, whether or not you want to leave the system on or not. Uh, oh. Quick question yes. before they decide. Uh, would it be possible for Zero to make adjustments to it? No, you would have to pull your engineers off the tractor beam issue. Okay. Uh, Bree will order it off. Order it off, as it so has been noted. All right, so... Ness definitely concurs with that. That's good. That was what I was going to ask. So... Uh, where we go from here, because I do want to make sure we get to the quote unquote, you know, climax on time. Um, here's what I'm thinking of doing. Um, let's say that probably about a day later, as everyone has had time to research certain things, test out different theories, things of that nature. Let's say that the senior staff is meeting in the conference room and we're already past the point where you all have explained your various theories to each other, where you've basically outlined, here's all the plans. And at this point, it's coming down to what is your course of action from here on? So we're, we are cutting about, you know, 10 minutes out of the role playing, but it's because I want us to get to the, uh, you know, the quote unquote good stuff, if yeah. that makes any sense. Okay. Um, Brie will say um, she'll kind of stand and pinch her nose. And... All right. Final recommendations. Anyone? Diplomacy is the first resort and less appealing options which will save the three planets in danger, but will not be so good for the potential hosts aboard the vessels. We have to assume based on our historic interactions that diplomacy is highly unlikely to work. So the least damage we can possibly do. Forcibly purge the Sean back to their own domain to reclaim the hosts. And what uh, mechanism did we devise to do that? Self-replicating beacons that produce theta and gamma radiation. Okay. That's plan A. That's plan B, technically. <laughs> As you said. <clears throat> 
plan A does not have a large self life. Yes, but diplomacy will definitely be difficult, but it is something we need to try. Yes, I agree. We are Starfleet. So prepare the beacons, have them on standby. First, we help tow these other planets and with uh, Cardassia's help and then we try diplomacy and if that doesn't work we purge them and because I think there might be a slight disconnect between what the players know and what the stream knows let me show you basically what the players came up with during our time off so you kind of can see what's going on um, so, uh, what happened, uh, offline was the players asked me if there was a sun that they could use for basically the purposes of, oops, of quote unquote, burning out the Sean using the sun, uh, freeing the host, things of that nature. And they did find a star, a uh, star labeled 9WL3, that two of the planets, uh, well, we'll call them Sean 1, Sean 2. Um, that could be slingshotted uh, around and may basically getting rid of those shot. So what they're talking about in terms of the probe is Sean number three, the planet that is too far out to be slingshotted around the star. So that is sort of the first thing, at least as far as I understand. So feel free to correct me. Their first plan is to do these two planets and then try the probe outs on Sean three. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I think I think that was the disconnect we were having. Because someone had asked me like, where, where, why are they doing that? So hopefully that clears things up. Okay. Um, cool. I guess since we're on the screen, I can explain what is going on here. So in order to move Sean one and Sean two uh, into in a basically a slingshot around the sun, that involves an extended task. And that extended task is going to be performed by one of the ships leading a fleet of ships. Uh, I'll go into more detail when we come back from break. But the initial thought is, is that a certain amount of ships will be applied to each extended task. And in that way, we will lower difficulty, lower resistance, things of that nature. But there is risk of a ship becoming damaged or blowing out. So we're sort of setting up for a resource management type deal. Um, but, uh, before we go, uh, to break, I wanted to finish the conversation where everybody is doing the recommendations. So we've heard from Vassar. Let's hear from everybody else. Uh, Commander, uh, sorry, Lieutenant Zero, I believe that you had a plan involving nanites. Are you carrying through with that or... Being <clears throat> being unable to perform realistic tests leave a margin for error that would be uncomfortable for Starfleet standards. However, due to the current circumstances, I do not see that much could not come of adding nanites to these probes that uh, Lieutenant Commander Vassar is releasing. Well, Captain, I don't have a suggestion as to a scientific means of approaching the situation, but in our study of the flotsam and jetsam that we collected from the White Hole, we believe that these troop carriers or refugee boats might in fact be from the same universe as the uh, universe class Leviathan, the universe that was destroyed by some fantastically powerful alien species. You may be able to appeal to the Sean from that universe using that knowledge. I'm sure they don't want to go back. And if they believe that we have some means of forcing them back, they may be more amenable to leaving their hosts. All right. That is definitely good to know. That makes diplomacy more palatable. 
and diplomacy is much easier when you have something to potentially offer. But how does that change? Why would they be trying to, if they were simply refugees, then they, why wouldn't they just want a place here instead of assimilating and attacking everyone in, that we've come across? Simply because they're refugees doesn't mean they can't also be conquerors, Captain. Well, it's an odd strategy. <laughs> but they're just but fleeing it... from something worse than themselves well that is an assumption to make or they could be expanding their empire's borders it is possible I think it's worth a conversation thank you Lee and Zero Do we have an idea on how we would communicate with the Sean? I am loath to suggest it, Commander, but you have been able to reach out to them telepathically in the past. Under proper medical supervision, you may be able to do so again. It is kind of what I was thinking, but uh, just wanted to know if anyone else had any other ideas. Well, we do know that the Shan are uniquely susceptible to certain forms of radiation. We might be able to create some kind of, I don't know, electromagnetic pulses that could communicate with them. Uh, we'd have to speak with the Shan on board this vessel to see if that plan is viable. Mm. The Shan aboard this vessel. I wonder if they could help us with communicating. It would be a considerable risk, I believe, but. The link they maintain with the other Sean may be helpful in determining their motives and emotional states. Yeah, we should have them with us on the bridge when we try to communicate. And they also may know more about the potential of an entity or a race that might be hunting them. Very true. Very true. Um, I'm almost wondering, I would love if they could elaborate for us on why they are so peaceful and why their counterparts are not. <laughs> um, so I definitely think that's worth a conversation. All right. Do we want to invite them to the conference room? I think if I remember correctly, they their telepathy uh, worked at a different frequency, maybe that's, I guess for lack of a better term, a, a biological distinction between the two factions that may have some bearing on their behavior. Hmm. All right. In addition, in addition to having the two of them aboard or, um, on the bridge, I believe we should also have ambassadors Charlotte and Archer present. Good call. Why not bring everybody on the bridge? <laughs> <laughs> Just throw that character and that character and that character. To make room, it's I will season place finale. myself in the It's fine. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm scrambling to throw all these tokens onto the bridge. No, carry <laughs> on. Carry on. I love it. We just need to play Let's... the portals overture from Avengers Endgame. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I feel like we're well equipped. Anyone have any final thoughts before we carry this out? No, Commodore. Okay. So uh, what we're going to do then is we will fast forward just a little bit to, I'll put us back on this map because that's where all the shiny ship tokens are. But uh, we sort of see an exterior shot of these two Jupiter-sized planets uh, slowly approaching or passing by a star. And we, the camera sort of pans to the right a little bit. And emerging from the twinkling darkness of space is 
not only the Fenrir, the Leif Erikson, and the Okita, but a group of Starfleet vessels, uh, Miranda classes, a few galaxies, even an old Excalibur class, or not Excalibur, uh, Excelsior class. Uh, basically, any and all ships that Starfleet could find on such short notice are flying in formation with the Fenrir at the head. And we sort of pan to the left now, and coming out of Cardassian space are several fleets of Galor and Keldor-class vessels, uh, probably about 16 of those in all. And the two fleets sort of meet up, uh, fall into formation, and begin approaching the two Shan troop carriers. And that's where we're going to take our break. So we will be back in 10 minutes, everybody. Stick around. Thank <laughs> you. 
Right, and welcome back. If you're just tuning in, we're about to play uh, basically planet uh, hockey with a bunch of tractoring ships and a star. So uh, over the break, uh, the players have broken down the resources of the fleets at hand, and they have assigned uh, Cardassians and Starfleet alike to each of Sean 1 and Sean 2. Now, the important question is, where is the Fenrir going? And are you splitting into multi-vector? We are. Okay. Alpha section is going to three. Okay. Beta section is two. Okay. Gamma is one. All righty. So, Does everybody agree with this, first of all? Yeah, that's a good question. I concur. Sounds good. All right. Okay. We would just need to figure we would just need to figure out player character wise who's where. Right. That was gonna be my next question is who's staying on alpha, who's staying on beta, who's staying on gamma. Um, so I think um the Commodore will be on Alpha okay. and we would speak to three first. We would try and contact three first. Okay. Then Pending that outcome, we go to Shan one. Okay. So player character wise, who is on gamma right now and who is on beta? Mm, beta is the medical science, gamma is the engineering, right? Correct. I mean, if we split up that way, then I would be on gamma, then Vasar and Lee on beta, and then everybody and then everybody else would be on alpha. I think, I think Rast needs to be on one of them to use his security. Yeah. Rast, you're on beta. Williams are on gamma. All Everyone right. else can kind of fall in. And maybe I'll take Cartwright over to Alpha. There you go. As their security officer. Nice. <laughs> but my console's back when you're done. <laughs> oh, uh, absolutely, sir. <laughs> All right. Sar so will be on there. beta. Zero here. All right, and Vassar is on beta. All right, so uh, I do like that narrative idea. So as everybody is getting into position, uh, Commodore, you're sort of looking at the view screen at these three separate, separate large troop carriers. Uh, the comms officer sort of turns to you, Commodore, and says, uh, this is uh, that time, sir. Should I open the wideband? Yeah, let's see if it works. Channel open. You are live. This is Commodore Bree Archuleta of the USS Fenrir. Who am I speaking with? There is no reply. Very well. If you are refugees from another universe, you are traveling here to seek asylum, we can offer you sanctuary provided here and now you state your intentions and understand that you are in a space with autonomous, independent, sentient beings with free will who will not allow you to assimilate them into your cause. I'd like you to roll me, because this is possible. I'd like you to roll me a presence command. Difficulty is going to be five. You have a focus. I believe you also have diffuse the tension. So that comes down to a difficulty four. I'm a dick. I spend threat to bring it back up to difficulty five. And uh, I will even let the ship assist you with a communications and command. Okay. Can I be in communication with the Commodore while she's talking. Yes, very easily. Okay. So what I what I would recommend, uh, Watney, is if you spend your determination. Yeah. And and I'll give it right back to you. What? That's his that's ability. The exo's job. Yeah, that's the EXO's ability. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. So how many am I rolling? I have to spend three momentum, but you'll get two free successes out of it yeah so that's basically the trade-off is is if you spend your determination and you would then have two free successes to start with but you also have augmented presence so you're at three successes already 
Mm -hmm. um, and you're rolling two dice with a focus. So it's very possible. Plus the ship's assisting. Um, okay. But just keep in mind that in order to get the determination back from Rast, you have to keep three momentum in the pool. Okay. Well, that is already uh, five successes. No, six successes. Uh, let's get that communications and uh, command from the ship. Whoever wants to roll that. Somebody. Yeah, I was going to say, is somebody getting it? Was, uh, I'll get can, it. but it's like great. Comms and what? Work, so. Comms and command. Anybody? There we go. Nice. Another, so a total of seven successes for two momentum. So what happens, Archuleta, is uh, the comms officer sort of does that thing where they put their hand to their ear like they're listening intently and go, uh, sir, they're replying, but audio only and they're doing so in a language that the universal translator is having a very difficult time to one moment sir and they tap on their console it's very terse sir but I can provide a rough translation please do and you can tell they're hesitating as they read this and sort of process this Sir, they are saying, Starfleet, we know of you. You will become one of us. There is nothing you can do to stop us. And then the message starts talking about oranges and apples. I don't know what that... I, 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 I don't know, sir. Rest. Any insight here? No, Commodore. I believe at this at this stage we have uh, fulfilled our duties under Directive Zero One Zero. As that was a direct threat. Well, I gave them an ultimatum. Buttons are starting to be pushed, I'm assuming? Yes. Okay. So you, just to be clear here, the the successes on that were just to, so that they would reply in the first place. Like, they were just going to stonewall you the entire time. So yeah. maybe this helps you a little bit. But we now need to get into the extended task of figuring out, you know, how successful you are at Sean 1 and Sean 2. So let's start with Sean 1. So Mr. Rast, this falls to you. I need you to roll right. me a control security and Fenrir beta needs to assist with structure security and the difficulty is a four. I will spend a momentum for an extra die. Okay. I'll roll for beta. Okay. And is, uh, is Vassar able to assist in any way? Uh, Vassar's on Gamma, I believe. Oh, no, he he was with we me. We switched Beta we and Gamma because... It around. Gotcha, Sports. gotcha. Um, if Vassar can tell me how he's assisting, I might allow it. Uh, Vassar can tap into the ship systems that are being used for the purpose and make sure that efficient resources are allocated to ensure no disruptions. Uh, do me a present science for you, Visar. <laughs> All right, so that's three successes already. Do we get um? Do we get focuses in this? You do as an assist, but you remember you're only rolling the one die for assist. Correct. Right. Uh, would cybersecurity apply here? Um, I'm going to say no, because you're not so much doing cybersecurity as you are trying to lead and otherwise allocate resources. Okay. All right. That is the requisite for successes. Very nice. 
Now, uh, what we need to do is, Rast, I need you to roll me six challenge dice. Sorry, just a question. Yes. Because we have more than 20 ships there, does that not reduce the difficulty of the task to a three? Thank you for correcting me. It is a difficulty three. You get a momentum, and you are still rolling six challenge dice. It also lowers the resistance, right? It does, yes. Okay. Oh, I'm re-rolling that. All right, well, that's one <laughs> momentum to re-roll that. <laughs> That's All right. a little better. So that is currently five work done, reduced by two because the resistance is two. So you're doing three work right now. Now you have the option of giving me two momentum and getting five work done. And as a reminder, if you do five work, what happens is you achieve a breakthrough. The resistance goes down. The magnitude goes down. So it becomes easier. Yes, and yes. Break. Shut up and take my money. <laughs> could we give you one for piercing two? You could also give me one for piercing two. That is an option. So same impact, but less momentum. Yeah, spent. yeah. I guess that, that would be better, yes. Alrighty. So what happens in around Sean 1 is the Starfleet vessels and the Cardassian vessels and the beta section of the Fenrir all sort of take up equidistant points from one another around this Jupiter-sized planet. And then using their tractor beams in a pulsating fashion, they begin to redirect Sean 1 into a close pass of the star. Um, so that's what happens at Sean 1. We now go to Sean 2 and do that exact same thing again, this time with Williams at the helm. All right. Um, can zero assist by, I guess, ensuring everybody's, he'll reach out and he'll, uh, connect with the other department heads of engineering and, uh, make sure that all ship tractor beams are operating. Like there are some that are pulling, some that are repulsing. So that way it just, it kind of helps guide it as opposed to everybody trying to pull at once. Yeah, you can do a presence engineering for zero. And Williams, as a reminder, that is a control security for you. Right. Uh, I am going to go ahead and um, spend my determination. Okay. Uh, I'm going to tap my value, uh, measure twice, cut once. Okay. And uh, get those two successes, and then we'll roll the rest. And um, since this is based around the tractor beam, would shipboard tactical systems as a focus count? It does. Oh, dear. Okay, that uh, that's a complication. Uh, let's see what the assists get you. Again, the uh, uh. gamma section is structure and security. Somebody rolling for gamma section. I think you Pro just volunteered. Oh, nope, there's Pro Lee. Propulsion systems or power systems? I'll give you power systems. Because e if you do not crit here, okay. So, unless I misheard, that's only two successes. Uh, he does have an extra I for control. Yeah, I've got yeah, augmented control. control. All right, so that's three successes. And didn't he spend determination? Yeah, that was what I was curious on, because I don't think I caught whether he spent determination. I did, yes. You did, okay. Then you are at five successes. Since you have 20 or more ships involved, it is a difficulty of four. So yes, you actually are able to get one momentum back. And yeah, so William, same sort of thing happens with you and Zero working in tandem. Bunch of ships surround Sean 2, begin tractoring it into a slingshot maneuver. Um... You need to roll me... What's your security? Your security is a five. You are rolling seven challenge dice. All right. And that is uh, six successes. Uh, now, nice. it is reduced by two because the resistance is still two. Mm -hmm. So would you like to spend a momentum to re get rid of the resistance? Uh, yes, let's do that. Okay. So you achieve a breakthrough... And sure enough, uh, you are also making good progress. 
And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get rid of this four that someone drew. Not that I don't mind, I just think it's prettier if I use the red numbers. All right, so uh, everything for gamma and beta is going well. However, over on alpha section, uh, Mr. Cartwright, can you please roll me an insight security, please? Okay. Insight security 2d20. Oh, sorry, difficulty. Difficulty of two. Okay. Um, Starfleet protocol, hand to hand combat, or Starship tactical systems? I'll give you the latter. All right, two successes is all you need. So Cartwright wasn't privy to the conversation, but remember how you all had speculated that maybe the Sean planets had some form of a defense mechanism? Well, the defense mechanism is that Cartwright, you're very you're like eagle eyeing observing Sean 3. Sean 3, the surface of the planet, like the atmosphere that was, you know, masquerading as a class J gas giant, that begins to evaporate. And coming up from the metallic surface of the sphere are what are essentially turret emplacements. And they begin bombarding the area around the planet. Not in a directed fashion, just a general bombardment. Uh, begin bombarding it in a series of photonic charges. Meaning that the Leif Erikson, the Okita, the Alpha section of Fenrir have to maintain their distance. Now the good news is that, oh no, there was a complication. So I'm going to roll two challenge dice here, because I do want to be fair. Uh, if I roll an effect on either of these challenge dice, then Sean 1 and Sean 2 are going to start experiencing some problems. So let's see what I roll. Okay, so Sean 2 is going to have some problems, but part of this process, because ships were involved, I now have to roll challenge dice to see how many ships stay involved. So you use 21 between Starfleet Group Alpha and Starfleet Group or Cardassian Fleet Beta. There's 21 ships. I'm gonna roll 21 challenge dice. All right. So what we what we care about are those zeros. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. Uh, so what I'm gonna say is the entire Cardassian Fleet Beta is taken out of the equation. Perhaps. Uh, what happens is that the Galore class vessels just aren't equipped for long-term tractor beam use, and they either have to pull away or otherwise disable their tractor beams to continue functioning. So that's what's going on with Sean 1. Sean 2, I'm going to say that I'm rolling 20 challenge dice, but I get a free reroll because of that complication, as Sean 2 begins bombarding the area with photonic charges. And again, what we care about are zeros here. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I do get a free reroll, so that is 15. All right, so we are at six, seven, eight, nine zeros. So same thing happens. The Cardassians go kaput, and one of the Mirandas in Starfleet goes kaput. Uh, it is at this point, though, that I have to ask Rast a very important question. Would you like your surprise to arrive? Um, you know, they're they're uh, watching, uh, quite uh, entranced by what's going on, mm -hmm. um, and they're going to uh, they're going to give this foolish Starfleet one more chance. Okay. Then we return to Sean number one. <clears throat> where you now have to basically attempt again. Unfortunately, you no longer have 20 ships involved, so you are back at a difficulty of three. Okay. Uh, so, you know, every problem has a solution, so I will be using my determination this time. Okay. And I will... Yeah, so that's... That is all I'm doing. Okay. So... Uh, control security. Yep. With two dice. And of course, uh, Basar and the ship. Mm -hmm. Same so, rules as before. So this is plus two. Ooh, just two. Just two from Rast. And mine is presence what? Presence science. 
It's not going well. Yeah, I was going to say, you need a success here. Uh, yeah. No pressure, Bizarre. No pressure. <laughs> hey, there you go. All right. So it's a little bit shaky. The Starfleet group the, does its best to basically take over from the Cardassians, but it takes a uh, Vassar, not shouting, but relaying information at hypersonic speeds. Yes, hypersonic. It's a word. Um, they... You know, basically, with Vassar being a hologram, they process things much more quickly, are able to get the Starfleet vessels where they need to be. So, Rast, I now need you to roll me another six challenge dice, please. Okay. All right, so that's already five successes. Uh, would you like to get rid of resistance by spending a momentum? Yeah. Okay. So that is another five work done, which means you achieve another breakthrough. And that's a good thing, because it is at this point that Sean 1 is going to begin bombarding the area, but we'll deal with that in a moment. Let's cut over to Sean 2. So Mr. Williams, Lieutenant Zero, same sort of thing going on there. Your difficulty is a 4. Okay, uh, I'm going to spend a point of momentum to roll an extra d20. Okay. All right, that's nice. 3 already. Uh, and with my augmented control, that makes it four. Makes it four. All right. Nell help from Gamma Section. Does Lieutenant Zero help you? All right. So this is all Williams. So Williams, you're probably taking the lead and somehow showing up a android in terms of coordination. Well done. Uh, you're rolling seven challenge dice. All right. Okay, so even without spending to reduce the resistance, you are achieving enough successes, but do you want to spend momentum for the extra resistance? Yeah, please. Okay, that's important because you not only complete the work track, but you also have five or more successes, so you actually get two successes on this. So your difficulty goes down to a two, and things are going great for you. Uh, however, it is now that time where I roll challenge dice to see how bad the Sean give it back to you. Let's start nice with Sean up. 1. So there's 15 ships there. All 16 right. counting the, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, the Fenrir I'm handling a little bit differently, but let's see. So that is 1, 2, 3. Again, I get a free reroll here. So that is 3, 12. All right, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So uh, to put it bluntly, Miranda's and Oberth classes are just, you know, falling out of formation almost over each other. Um, but you still have enough to attempt the task, which is what is, is important here. Mm -hmm. um, so now we go to Gamma. Gamma, there is 11 vessels. All right, so that's one, two, three, four. Again, a reroll, so that's seven five six seven so that's reduced Ooh, this is actually working out quite lovely uh you're reduced to exactly five vessels on sean two at this point um so before i ask rask if his surprise is coming in now let's focus on alpha and sean three at this moment what is the surprise so <laughs> Uh, Lieutenant Cartwright and Archuleta, I have an important question for you both. Uh, would you in any way be trying to basically f support the rest of the fleet, or are you just maintaining distance on Sean 3? Um, I think given the situation of their bombardment mm -hmm. uh, and the activity of the other two, we would go help. Okay. Which section are you going to go help? Um, okay, so can I pick from the Okita, Leif Erikson, and Alpha? Or Correct, yeah, just... you, could send off, you could send off whichever of those three parts you want. Okay. Um, who wants what? They're all the same, right? Kind of, not really. Um, let's do Alpha to two. Okay. Okita to one. 
and we'll have that should be fine yeah so go ahead and move those tokens uh rast that will happen when we get to sean too okay sounds good to me i just didn't know how many a lot okay um are we talking like aragorn coming in with a ghost ship (laughs) you'll (laughs) find out in a moment (laughs) okay (laughs) talk about the defector i think All right, so if everybody's where they want to be, uh, we're gonna we're gonna turn our attention to Sean One. So Sean One, uh, you only have six vessels, well, seven with the Okita. Um, so yeah, Rast, go ahead and uh, same rolls as before. Difficulty's only a two. Uh, we're gonna use that. La- uh, we're gonna use that. actually, it's only a two. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to use the last momentum. Okay. You would. <laughs> no. Ooh, that is a complication. Interesting. That is enough successes already, though. So, is Vassar helping and Beta of Fenrir needs to assist? Same as mm-hmm. before. All right, Vassar, you're helping. Does someone have the beta section? Oh. Ooh. Ooh, that is two complications. Okay, I think I know what I want to do for those complications. Uh, one of them will be revealed in a moment. The other one, I'm going to say the resistance actually increases. So the resistance is now a five. Okay. So you are rolling six challenge dice. Okay. All right, so right now you're not even getting any work done. And we did get a momentum back. You did. Because we, uh, and so I can use that to reroll the four. You can. Or we're going to try that. All right, so right now you are doing two work. Uh, you know what? That's better than nothing. And we don't have anything to spend, so. You can't give me threat. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. I would just point out that if you did at least five work, you would successfully complete Sean one. All right, let's do it. It's just three. <laughs> so easily persuaded. Have some threat. <laughs> All right. So uh, Sean one is successfully, uh, shall we say, flung towards the star. However, this is now time for that second complication. And that second complication is that the bombardment coming out from Sean 1 not only destroys six of the ships in Group Alpha, but the Okita takes a breach to sensors, and Beta takes a breach to sensors as well. Okay. But as we turn our attention to Sean 2... Rast, you've been saving it. Go ahead and tell yeah. them what happens. Uh, how many are there? There are 15. Okay. So as uh, as the uh, gamma section is uh, positioning the remaining uh, group of Starfleet, uh, Starfleet group beta to try to uh, tractor beam the vessel, one by one Romulan warbirds appear out of cloak and just launch full spread photon torpedoes at the Sean vessel. All right. So uh, what I'm going to say here is that actually it would be better for them to use the plasma torpedoes. Okay. Um, But that's a good thing because they have an effect on those plasma torpedoes that regular photons do not. So I'm going to let you make the call here, Rast. Destroy or disabled? Oh, they're blowing the fucking thing up. (laughs) <laughs> All right. So everyone reacts in a different way, I'm assuming. But as these 15 warbirds uncloak and fire their plasma torpedoes, um, they have such an effect on Sean 2 that there's just a cascading chain of explosions across the surface of the hull. And in moments, 50 million lives go poof, gone. And all of the warbirds just start peeling off, vanishing into cloak. 
Well, it might have been more helpful if they had targeted Shan 3, but um, that was interesting. <clears throat> See, I must effective. ask, is Vassar affected by the damage to the beta section? You Well, did you have your neural link going? Of course. Then you would. I believe that is, what, three challenge dice? So you'd be taking two stress, so you're fine. But yeah, I thought I, you'd like that, uh, Archuleta. Great. <laughs> Fifty million dead. I thought you'd like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, oh it is. My a, God. This, it is a, a telepathic damage from that. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, but Commodore, as you're processing the fact that Sean Two just went boom, um, the comms officer sort of turns and says. Sir, we're getting a hail from Sean 3. Audio only. Uh, yes. But a little bit more clear. The Universal Translator's caught up. So now they want to talk. Put it through. Hey, he just blew up one of them. <laughs> so again, audio only. Uh, the voice is androgynous. You can't really tell if it's male or female or anything in between. But the voice says, so this is the vaunted Starfleet value of life. You just doomed 50 million refugees to death. I question your ethics, Commodore. You left us no choice. You would have done worse. You didn't even give us the time of day. I gave you a chance. You gave us an ultimatum. There is only two options. Unless you have a third. Brass, it is at this point I'd like you to roll me an insight and a command, please. Difficulty of one. You're also muted. Do I have a focus on you this? You do have a focus, yes. Okay. All right, hey. so that's three successes. You get two momentum. How would you say Archuleta's mental state is right now? Very angry, very directed. Uh, would you say irrational, perhaps? Yes. Oh. Rast, you pick up on all of that. And I leave it to you whether you do a first officer thing and step in or not. Uh, he's going to see what's going on first. Okay. Um, but uh, Sean 1 is handled. Is Sean 1 correct? is now sort of drifting towards the star and passes by and just sort of continues on its way. But because your sensors are damaged right now, you can't really follow up. But the bombardment stopped, so positive. Well, and it's going slow enough that we'll catch up to it afterwards. Right. Uh, he is going to immediately head towards uh, the other vessels. Okay. And uh, he's going to uh, send a communication to the captain. Okay. What are you saying? Our. Um, what is the uh, what? What's the next steps, Captain? Sean One is handled. Well, we were just reached out to by the only remaining planet. Also, is that right, GM? There's only one left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if they decide to take the, the ultimatum, then we won't have a problem. But I have a feeling they won't. I mean, we made a plan for this, so you know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Rast looks over to Vassar, and is there any way that you can get me in communication with Sean, uh, Sean 3? I can attempt to patch you through, Captain. Thank you. <laughs> and Vassar... You are going to be rolling 
a control and an engineering. The Fenrir will assist you with a communications and engineering. I'm going to spend some threat here to make it thematic. The difficulty is two. You do have a momentum you can spend for a third die. I'm trying to see if I have any reliable... Uh... Focuses. I do not believe I have any that are in communications. Hmm. E. Uh, can I spend that momentum? Yeah, go for it. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you said it was control engineering? Correct. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to let it succeed at cost, so I get a threat back. But that complication, Commodore, you are seeing that Rast is deliberately trying to set up a second channel to Sean 3. But otherwise, that, Rast, as far as you know, you've got a calm channel to Sean 3 now. Communications are open. Uh, and Vassar's on my ship. No, Vassar is on Ras ship. But I can still, I still know that. Yes. You detected, yes. Okay. Commander, what are you doing? Trying to communicate with Sean 3. We already tried that. I'm trying again. All right. Good luck. <laughs> Uh, so he uh, he hails uh, Sean Sean Vessel. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish to communicate with you about our options before things get out of control. Vassar, they have not responded verbally or videoly. Videoly, it's a word. Um, <laughs> but they have sent back a confirmation signal that they are receiving and listening. They are receiving you, Captain. This situation is going to get out of control quickly. And if you and I can reach an accord that is mutually beneficial, we may, we may yet be able to pull ourselves out of this. But you will have to talk to me to get to the next step. Because I apparently like having hard rolls. <laughs> all my threats gone. All of it. Just all of it out the window. Uh, this is a difficulty 5. Presence plus command. Complication range 16 to 20. But if you pull this off, you just showed up the Commodore. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm going to challenge a value. Okay, which value are you challenging? Um, that... Um... Can't walk away. Okay. So you get it's your determination. Very yeah, I was going to say, so you get your determination right back. And uh, he, I will spend it. Okay. Uh, and then um, for me to do anything else, momentum-wise, I wouldn't be able to. You would have to give me threat in, in it. So if you wanted one more additional dice, it would be a momentum and a threat. If you wanted two additional dice, you would need to give me... I believe it is four threat, one momentum. You get four threat and one momentum. Okay. I want, I want this to work. So for all the beans, let's see what you all roll. Right. And uh, is the ship able to assist? I will allow the ship to assist with a computers. No, 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 no. Uh, let's do communications and command. And that's six successes. That is indeed six successes <laughs> with a complication. Oh, seven. Sorry. Seven. Oh, because right, because you have the, augmented presence. Augmented presence, yes. All right, so you do get two momentum. I'm going to let Lee Tobin decide this, the fate of this, because I feel like I haven't given him enough opportunity. 
in a purely non-metagaming sense, but it's totally metagaming, would you rather give me the two momentum and a dialogue is opened, or would you like the dialogue to be opened, but maybe something negative happens regarding the Commodore? Oh. I think something negative is going to happen regarding the Commodore. All right, fair enough. Yeah. So... What happens is the Sean actually do video communication with you, Rast. And what appears on screen is a humanoid in what is essentially a mask, like a full covering mask across their face, uh, with these very long, uh, not pointed ears, but almost like antenna coming up where their ears would be on a human. Um, their mask is perfectly melded with a some sort of a, a suit. Uh, a form-fitting suit, so you can't really get a feel for their features, but they do open a dialogue, and they say, Very well, we will talk with you, Commander Rast, on one condition. Yes. There's a pause for dramatic effect, of course. Of course. We never want to see your Commodore ever again. She would be happy to oblige. I do not believe that uh, she wants to see you any more than you want to see her. Perhaps there was an error in translation. We don't want to see her in any capacity whatsoever. And it is at this point, Vassar, I'd like you to roll me an insight science, please. Difficulty of one. And if you have anything related to translation, linguistics, all would apply here. Uh, the only thing close that I had was Iconian language. And fortunately, they are not Iconians. Nope. Uh, so what was that again? That is a insight science difficulty of one. Hmm. Potential to challenge anything here? Maybe, but you do have uh, two momentum, if I remember correctly. Oh. Uh, okay, I'll use a momentum for a third dice. Okay. All right. For some of the marbles. Hey, three successes. You get two momentum. So, Vasar, you're analyzing the natural feed and the translated feed and you're trying to put dots together when they say they don't want to see archuleta they are literally saying that they do not want archuleta in the same quadrant of the galaxy <laughs> captain i believe they are requesting the equivalent of a quadrant wide restraining order When you say captain, are you referring to Bree? I'm I'm talking to Rast. Uh, Vassar has adopted the colloquial use of captain, as in the person who is in you command. Traitor. <laughs> you <laughs> fucking traitor. Um, season three, Civil War. <laughs> Rast is going to put together a quick communication to the cat uh, to the Commodore, mm -hmm. um, basically saying that he wants to propose a ruse i i love a good ruse go on and what he wants to do is he wants the alpha section to warp away at the last second as torpedoes are detonated on its location so it looks like we've destroyed her is that the picard maneuver or the Riker maneuver i think it's the picard maneuver wesley maneuver basically yeah basically yeah you could do it for the war game simulation yes and then I will be able to continue um, communication with the Sean if you are uh, um, up for this task, Archuleta. Is he talking to her? Yes. Apparently there's a fire alarm in the background. <laughs> yeah, uh, dinner's done. Ah. <laughs> 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 uh. 
Um, he's has he made her aware of the nature of their request? No. Just that uh, they don't want to talk with her around. Captain, mightn't you just go to the Andromeda Galaxy? Might that not suffice for their purposes? Um, open a comms channel to Shen 3. Yeah, very good, madam. Channel's open. Uh, Belay, belay that order. I am, re I am, uh, I am relieving <laughs> Archuleta of her command. Shan, okay, so I this is you. me just would going. You, <laughs> would you, um, would you rather talk to me or somebody who just assassinated however many millions of you with Romulan warbirds he just pulled out of his asshole? <laughs> and he's trying his best to get uh, Lee to shut off communication. So this is an interesting chain of events. Let's just take it one by one. <laughs> so um, Zero will look at Williams and just... So what set are we picking? Uh... Williams. <laughs> do you have to ask? Do we stand with the capture or do we stand with the crew? I'm for Captain Archuleta. Um, stop. Zero will attempt to disrupt all communications. Okay. <laughs> this is certainly now an interesting finale. We we were on a path, and then we, we just decided. No, we're going to go this way now. Are we? Are we actually? Are we doing we Civil were, War? We were I think trying we're doing... to railroad ourselves, and they were like, "Ooh, shiny!" And yeah. <laughs> I love it. Over no, there. we're going to play this out. All right. So if she's emotionally compromised, she's emotionally compromised. Motherfuckers. This is true. <laughs> yeah, that's basically what uh, Rast is saying over the, uh, over the intercom. You so I know that she, she was, uh, she was, you know, taken over by these Sean. She is acting irrationally. Mm -hmm. So what happens is gamma section. Gamma section goes dark as Zero and Williams begin to fight for control of the ship. Uh, okay, I would, Wait, I would I mean, take up we'll... arms against my crew. I don't, I mean, I know. mean, all I want to do is just <laughs> disrupt communications, just basically ship wide, Listen. like engineering wise, just everybody, no, no more communications till we get this figured out. You know, right, I, right, you, right. You, you and I need to have a conversation. Yeah. Adjust to gamma section. Yeah. No, I think he was trying to disrupt communication from Alpha and Gamma, basically. So let's ask this. Do you mean just Gamma or Gamma and Alpha? Uh, trying to disrupt communications across all three Fenrir, seeing as they're all interconnected. Okay, then that is a role. All right. That role we'll is going to be a control engineering... Okay. Assisted by your communications and security. And you get to pick the difficulty on this. It can be a one, a two, or a three. What that means is if you succeed, that is the difficulty of someone trying to break this encryption or white noise jamming. I was going to say, Vassar is connected to beta section and he's contesting this. Okay. So you are going to be doing Vassar. You will be doing an opposing role after we figure out the difficulty. You will be doing a insight and engineering. And this would be assisted by the ship's communications and security. Um, yes. Zero would like to also send it like just before comms go dark. Mm -hmm. He wants to send out the current coordinates of the gamma and alpha. And then just one word that says... Uh, reconnect. Okay. Basically, just trying to get like, let's all get together and figure this out before we go to war with ourselves across however far apart we are. Mm -hmm. Um, if I give you some threat, can I make it a difficulty five, or would that be a little too extraneous? I think that would be a little too extraneous. Okay, so let's go with difficulty three. Okay. 
Again, that is a control and engineering for Mr. Zero and communications and security from Gamma. Right. Um, five threat for three dice. All right. Damn. <laughs> Don't worry, Vasar. I'm going to spend threat and give you some. Control engineering. So no help from Gamma, unfortunately. Um. Also, hi, 300 people. How you doing? Cybernetics or power systems won't apply. No, Those no power apply. systems. Nope. No, no. Oh, the final rule. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't have that. No, no focus. But you still roll five successes, so you get two momentum. <laughs> All right, Vassar. Uh, oh, question. Well, yes. I have bold engineering, so whenever I buy dice with threat, it says I can re-roll a d20. You Does can re-roll mine, or can I re-roll the ships? No, you can only re-roll yours. Okay. All right, so Vassar, to break through this, you are again doing an insight engineering. And the difficulty is a three. The ship is assisting with a communications and security... I'm going to spend six threat to give you five dice. And cybersecurity as oh, yeah. focus. Oh, yeah. And uh, John, could you roll for the ship? The it's ship has done. already given a success. You get five dice. Yep. This is incredible. And a focus. Yep. <laughs> Zero versus Vassar. Fight of the century. Complications. Oh! No, that is five, six successes. So, Vassar, you break through mm -hmm. Lieutenant Zero's jamming. But only for your section at the moment. You can give me two momentum to wipe out the jamming completely. Uh, I believe I would like to communicate my commander on this part for of the ship. Uh, commander Rast, there is a jamming signal coming from another section of the Fenrir. I've been able to stifle it. You still have communications open. However, I am not certain how long I can hold this. Thank you, Vassar. I will continue to try to communicate with the Sean and see if we can reach an accord while others are dealing with other situations. And then he will uh, talk back to the uh, Sean again. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are currently examining the options. Um, would you be would you be open to relocating to another quadrant? This is acceptable. And then therefore, uh, you will be away from Captain Archuleta in a different quadrant of space. I have a solution out of character that Lee is not going to like. The Sean send back telemetry the telemetry takes the sean three planet into the bajoran wormhole well fortunately i'm playing lieutenant junior grade cartwright at the moment so <laughs> lee is just he's off at the science lab somewhere maybe having some uh some klingon fire wine mm -hmm. but uh um if if he was aware of this Mm -hmm. um, I would presume that he's on Gamma section. Yeah, you would be on Gamma section with Vassar. Or, not sorry, you would be on Gamma with Zero and Williams. Okay. Um, well, he would, he would approach them and he would say, that's absolutely unacceptable. What, I mean, are, are we actually going to trust a man who just murdered 50 million people for no reason whatever plan he works out with a sham can't be trusted any more than he can 
Question. Gamma and Alpha both being under communication lockdown, would we even know about that? Uh, it is at this point that we have to resolve one quick thing. Hey, Williams. Hi. Let's say that you're an impressionable young ensign that may or may not be named Jensen and may or may not be on Alpha section and may or may not have just heard Rass say, relieve the Commodore of duty. What would Mr. Jensen oh. be doing? <laughs> I already whooped her ass once. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so let's first establish where he was when that order was given. Okay. Um, let's say, you know what? In, he's in Alpha Sections Engineering. Okay. And is just sort of monitoring this. And... At that order, his head just sort of snaps up and he goes rigid. His eyes go wide. It's happening. Oh my god. Okay. He pulls phaser. <laughs> All right, Jensen. You can do this. Can, can I give uh, you... Not realizing that the phaser's not powered because none of them are working. Mm hmm Okay. And he's gonna merge from right up to the bridge. So merging onto the bridge, Commodore is Mr. Jensen. Holding a phaser. That's clearly not powered. Cartwright, you are the acting security officer. How do you respond? Ensign, why don't you put that down before you hurt yourself? Or before I hurt you. I mean, it's, it's the same thing, really. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lieutenant, but you heard the commander. The, the Commodore is to be relieved of command effective immediately. Commodore, I'm here to escort you to your quarters. Please don't resist. Commodore, how would you like me to uh, uh, address this situation? <sighs> um, do you just take him to the brig, please? Absolutely, ma'am. All right, Jensen. Now, why don't you just... Put the phaser down before you hurt yourself. You, you'll be fine. You wouldn't want to be exposed to any horrible pathogens on the bridge. Just think about all the, the, the toxic air you're breathing at the moment. <laughs> what, what, right. what, do you, what do you mean, toxic air? Well, you don't know about the contamination on board the bridge. What? Yes, the, the noxious gases that have... In, in, been released upon the bridge, right? The, the blowback from the, the, the plasma torpedoes. I thought I smelled trilithium resin. Yes, yes. So why don't you take yourself to sick bay and have the doctor look at you? I'm sure that they'll be able to treat you. Okay. Um, all right, I've got to go. I've, I've got to go right now. Lieutenant, please take the Commodore into custody. We'll handle uh, the mutiny for you. Don't worry. Wait, oh. what? Just give me the face. And completely, completely dumbfounded, he just absently hands over the phaser, turns around, steps to the turbo lift, and goes, Sick bay. <laughs> I'm at a loss where to go for beer. I'm just going to say it. I'm like, ah. Oh, Thanks fuck. for trying. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, right, so it's a two-part season rest. finale. Yeah. <laughs> the rest's communication back to the Sean will be that uh, the wormhole is definitely a no, a, a non-starter. Okay. Um. In that case, I believe the Sean simply repeat their quest it. for Archuleta to not be in the quadrant. I think that would be fitting for where they're going. Commodore, might I suggest something? Sure. Well, we still have access to the full weapons ray on board the vessel. Uh, perhaps you could just levy a few quantum torpedoes at that uh, Shan 3. That would resolve the issue rather swiftly. It seemed to work well enough for the Romulans. If that is your intention, I mean, I don't know why we're bending about, what is the human expression, beating about the bush here? 
they opened up a channel with me. I assume that they wanted to continue to talk. Is that right? If you're listening. No reply. Fire the torpedoes. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> so, and... Mr. Tobin, I need you to roll me, or sorry, Mr. Cartwright, I need you to roll me control security. Difficulty of three. The ship will assist you with a weapon security. I'm saying you're firing full spread maximum yield. So you're getting a lot of dice here. I'm also going to spend threat to give you full dice. Oh, okay. So applicable focus. Oh, yeah. As Gamma, I mean, as the, uh, Alpha Section kind of turns its bow and uh, charges its weapons, mm -hmm. Zero will look at Williams and say, we stand with the captain, correct? Weapons. Uh, Zero will do a scan for weakness, and then he will also, if it works, he wants to use a small uh, phaser shot to just kind of communicate to alpha section where the weak point is okay i'm gonna let it happen without a roll but i need to know what is beta doing when they see oh you don't have sensors because of the breach you have no idea <laughs> that is correct so alpha and gamma turn to sean three they scan for a weakness Tobin, for giggles, I want you to roll me your quantum torpedo damage. So go ahead and hit the uh, quantum torpedo or the torpedo macro. Hopefully that's still working. All right. So that is uh, seven successes uh, or seven damage. But how many effects? One, Four. two. So that is 11 damage. If you give me all of your momentum, I will allow you to blow up the Sean. No pressure. Yeah, Cartwright would do it. I mean, he's just been ordered by the Commodore to, to fire, and I mean, he is fully devoted to his duty. All right. So, Thanks. quantum torpedoes fly from Gamma and Alpha and strike the Sean planet. And for a moment, it feels like maybe it didn't do enough, but then there's that same cascading explosion resulting in 50 more million lives being committed to the void. <laughs> oh, God. It's at this point that Vassar, now you can get the sensors working again. Uh, zero will look at Williams. I suggest we move Gamma to intercept Beta. And then I can restore communications to have the Okita and Ericsson pick their sides. No uh, size Ra detect. Rast is just going to uh, stand up from the chair and say, Vassar, you have command of the ship. <laughs> Ethical dilemmas. I was I was already quite shocked by what my countrymen did. I wanted to try to save the last fifty million, but he shrugs and uh, exits to uh, to the ready room. Commander, awaiting your signal to restore communications. Do it. Uh, zero restore. Um, he will open a channel directly to uh, the captain. Uh, captain, this Lieutenant Zero. Myself and Commander Williams, along with Gamma Section, stand with you. I appreciate that. Commodore, um, should we prepare for boarding action on board the uh, beta section? No, go ahead and just rejoin. And because I think it is thematically appropriate to leave this as a cliffhanger, that's where we'll end the session. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Plot goes that so way. Players go that way. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, I guess we could never play anything again. <laughs> oh, I thought the 5,000 for Rangu well, were bad. <laughs> we're all out of Starfleet now. Yeah. That's, that's, that's it. None of our careers are surviving. <laughs> They might just, you know, bring back uh, execution as a punishment in the Federation. They, they may just make it up and say we went to Talos Bore and just execute all of us. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm gonna so uh, like to prepare communication careers. to Starfleet Command to report everything that just happened here and request advice. <laughs> well, request I'm, transfer, please. I want to know and what the Akita and Ericsson are doing now. Because <laughs> I feel like, out of spite, the Clement would join Beta. <laughs> but like you guys just assume that the Shan were gonna keep their end of whatever bargain they totally we were them. They oh, weren't. If, if they were gonna the, do whatever they wanted, the, easy. They the, always did. Uh, the the brutal thing there was of war. is it was more of a, a trying to buy time type mm -hmm. situation, more so than actually making a deal with them because yeah, right. they're moving so slow. If we could get that, you know, basically it was one of those situations where if we could get them to relax. Yeah, this would have been this would have been so much simpler if the Romulans had just destroyed Shan three and not Shan two because we were we See, were the just thing, this close. The thing is, <laughs> Shan like, and three, the was getting, and then moral <laughs> responsibility is off our off our shoulders. Mm -hmm. uh, well, but the thing is, is that we don't two, even know if it worked with Shan one. We have yet to yeah. open up communications to even see if it worked over there first. Right. Yes, now. good have So we're we're about left. to just commit mass genocide like we yeah. tried to prevent four sessions ago. <laughs> Vile of humanity failed. But no, John, you were saying. <laughs> yeah, uh, Shant 2 was the one that was going toward the Romulan homeworld. And, oh, so they uh, were like... And they yeah. basically said, nah. yeah, they're not doing well enough. We don't we don't want these people at our house. So it was, it was basically a bunch of old Romulans coming out onto the front lawn and saying, get off my yard! <laughs> Speaking from experience? Pretty much. <laughs> So let me say this, because this is an interesting series of events that we have found ourselves in. Um, here's what we're going to do is we're going to talk off stream a little bit. But on stream, I want it said that I can figure out a way to keep the players in their current characters. But this is an opportunity that if anyone is unhappy with their current characters or feels that their current characters would be better suited taking stage right then we can talk a little bit about, you know, you guys changing to a different character. Um, but I don't want that to be an expectation because I believe I can figure out a way to spin this that keeps most people happy. Like, there's still going to be interpersonal drama. I don't think that's going away. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> but I can figure out a way to keep you all together. Um, but we'll talk more offline about that. Um, but yeah, that is our season two finale, everybody. Uh, this is where I'm going to end the stream. So Twitch, YouTube, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Thank you so much for watching. We had, uh, at least according to my OBS, I saw 320 for a moment. So hi, 320 people. Uh, season three starts next week, unless I have to delay a week to figure out what to do. <laughs> anyway, and, should we just go ahead and take that delay just so we can? You know, let's do that. I think that makes more sense. Why don't we just go ahead and delay a week? Because that'll give me more time to process and figure out how to spin all this. Um, so you will see these lovely individuals. Uh, let me look. That would be June 2nd will be the start of Season 3. But yeah, Twitch, YouTube, this is where I uh, push the buttons off. So uh, bye, stream.